Today we're taking a look at the SK Hynix Platinum P41 M.2 SSD. Now this is the 2 terabyte version of the M.2. It's a 2280 NVMe PCIe Gen 4 internal SSD. Now this SSD is going to actually do 7,000 megabytes of reading speed and 6,500 megabytes of writing speed. Now inside the package you're going to get this nice little carrying case. This little case is actually nicely well done to protect that SSD in shipping, which is beautifully uh, set up. I like that. When you pop it open, you're going to be greeted with the beautiful little M.2 right here. Now, this is, of course, a standard M.2 SSD Gen 4 right here. Uh, do not touch the gold pins on this side because that's what you're going to be sliding into your motherboard. Now, like I said, 7,000 megabytes of reading speed, 6,500 megabytes of writing speed to be lightning fast and great for, of course, transferring that data in pictures or anything else. That you're doing now this is a 176 layer nad flash m.2 ssd which should give you guys many many hours of usage without issues on hand with this now the next thing you're going to see with this of course sk hynix platinum p41 is change of views we're going to pull out the pc case we're going to show you guys how to insert this and then we're going to do a speed test for you as well with that so if you guys give me a second we'll be right back in a different view Okay, we now have, of course, a different view, and we have our computer case. This is the Fantex Evolve X case right here. Now, we're going to have to take, of course, the glass door off, pull our nice little graphics card out. So we're going to actually have to do a couple screws and a couple pieces. First and foremost, we're literally going to pop off that front panel off of this PC just like that. That's all there is to this. That front panel just slides off very easily. Now, with this, I'm going to actually move you guys back a little bit more so you guys can kind of see a few things. First and foremost, you guys are going to need a screwdriver if you don't if your screws are more than hand tight. On this case, there are a couple thumb screws, and yes, there is a uh, filter that does look like it needs cleaned, and that's only less than two weeks dirty. Uh, that is not great for my health right now. Let's just be honest; that's actually pretty pretty dirty. Uh, but we're going to pop those screws off, then the glass door is going to swing open, and then of course slide off, and that's all we're going to do, of course, to the glass door. Now, you guys technically can leave the glass door on here. I'm pulling my glass door off so I don't break the door uh, for this purpose of video. Now, once we're in here, of course, we're going to pull the two cables. Now, do make sure that you guys are not static cleaned or anything like that. Now, we're going to need a screwdriver to get these two screws up here because I think, well, I might be able to do it by hand. Um, sometimes I use screwdrivers, sometimes I don't, depending on if I feel like fighting the thumb screws in the side of this. Now remember, they are just that. They are thumb screws. So you're supposed to do thumb tight. They do have a Phillips head on them, so you guys can actually do that. Hopefully you guys can kind of see me uh, pulling this and doing this. Uh, I know the angle view is a little bit far off, but there's just two screws holding that in. Now, I'm actually going to pull you guys in a little closer because on my PC, the motherboard, there's a little button, but if there isn't a button, there's going to be a little clip down here that you're going to press for this. Now you guys are in a little bit closer, guys. I do have jewelry on, and this is the point I'm going to take my jewelry off because I don't need it to start anything. So I'm going to pull the ring and everything off. There's a button on my motherboard. My motherboard has a button that releases, of course, my graphics card. Now my graphics card is just coming out. If you don't have that button, you'll have a little clip like this one down here that will pop out. Now this will set aside so we actually don't have to worry about that. But now we're going to find, of course, our M.2 tray slots. And now mine actually has five different pieces. Uh, we have an SSD here. We have SSDs, of course, here, 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 and here. There's five different slots. Now I actually have to pull these off and figure out which slot has the 500 gigabyte version because we're putting that two terabyte version in there. Okay, now for this, guys, we're going to get you guys a little bit more lighting because I don't like the amount of light that we have over here for you guys. So we're going to attempt to get you guys some lighting up in there. Now, hopefully that's enough. What we're going to do is we're going to take off this screw and that screw right there to pull off, of course, the bottom SSD slot tray. Now, I believe this is going to be the one with, of course, that piece that we need. So we're going to loosen this first screw so you guys can kind of not see it because of my big hand. But then we're going to, of course, take the second screw off over here, just like this as well. Now, when we do this, we're going to be, of course, careful. Once we know it's actually loose, we can come in here, of course, with our hands and kind of pop it off with that. Now, do be careful when sliding this off of here because you do have, of course, if you guys are still thermal paste on, which I am, you guys are going to see it. Now, once we're off, 
we'll see we have an Oracle and we have an XLC SSD. Now the XLC is actually the 512 gigabyte SSD that we're going to use. On my motherboard, we actually have these little retainer clips that just slide up. And once you slide up, the SSD pops out. It's that simple to pull that SSD out. Now, like I said, we're, since we're going to do that, we're going to reverse the actual process. And we're going to grab the SK Hynix Platinum P41. And we're going to slide that one in here. Now, when you're sliding it in, you're going to make sure that the teeth are, of course, in there. Now, I'm going to bring you guys in a little closer so you guys can see that too. Now that we changed angles, you guys are going to see that we actually have a slit piece up on this teeth. And that's going to go on the top. We're going to come over here and we're just going to, of course, slide this in there very generally and easily. And then we're going to slide it back there into place. And then we're going to trick, of course, to slide in down that piece. Now, your motherboard may take a little screw. If you're screwed, then you'll screw it on just like that. And now to reverse the process, of course, we're going to pull you guys back a little bit more so you guys can see this. And we're just going to grab, of course, that uh, thermal pad and, of course, cooling plate that goes over it. And then we're just going to screw it back on. Now, I dropped my screwdriver, so do be careful. Tap the sides of the metal. And then, of course, we're going to just start screwing it in. Now, do make sure that your screws are lined up properly. Mine may be a little off, but we'll actually see and fit, make sure that it, uh, if it is that we can actually fix this. And it is off, slightly off place, which isn't that big of a deal. All right, the top one needs to be generally set. And of course, now the bottom one is in place, so we're gonna actually screw that in there, just like this. Remember, it doesn't have to be super tight, just hand snug. Nothing on this needs to be like uh, torqued down or anything like that of the sort. Now, once that's in there, of course, you guys are going to reverse the process. You're going to set your graphics card back in here. You're going to put your plate back on and you're going to connect your cables. Next view you guys are going to see is us setting up this uh, SSD and doing a speed test. We have the SK Hynix in here. We're actually going to pull up our device or disk management. Now, disk management is where we're going to find the drive. Now, right there, it actually shows you guys a drive. Uh, you must initialize this disk before Logic Disk Manager can access it. So we're going to actually, do you know, guide partition table or master boot record uh, with this, of course. Now, guys, we're going to come down here. We're going to slide down, of course, to the disk 4. Now, to disk 4, we're going to initialize disk just like that. And we're going to click initialize. Once it's initialized, we can actually allocate it and we can use it with that. Now, of course, you guys can actually format it and use it as you need with this. But it is now, of course, a disk drive that's going to be set up in here for us. Now, of course, with all that, you guys have your properties to show you guys the spaces and everything with, of course, this drive. Now that it's initialized, we're actually going to have to come over here, click here and click new simple volume. Then we're going to click, of course, next. Uh, it's going to actually tell us to pick the size. The size is perfectly set where it needs to be. Of course, it's already need uh, a marked F drive, which is fine for me because that's what it used to be with the smaller SSD. Now, of course, we're going to click this and we're going to initialize with this and we're going to click finish. We now have a fully initialized and formatted SSD that's installed into, of course, the PC. Now, what we're going to, of course, next do is grab Crystal Disk Mark, and we're going to bring this up here, of course, with this. And we're going to grab Drive F because that's the drive we were on, and we're going to click, of course, Test All. Now, this is where it's going to show us our reading and write speeds. Now, hopefully, it will compare to what it should be, about 7,000 read and, of course, 6,500 write speeds. Now, if we're first initializing, it's going to take a little bit. Now, 7149 is not bad. It's pretty close to, uh, actually, it's, you know, a little over what it was supposed to be, which I'm going to say is pretty good for me. Now, we're going to actually do a couple of the read tests. We're going to have read, read, and those, those two should be about the same, I would hope, for the first two uh, the third and fourth, sometimes they, you know, they go a little smaller, uh, sometimes they stay. It's really up to the software itself with that, too. I always go by the first couple reads and the first couple writes to say, hey, that's what it should be. See, now it actually dropped off, and that's because it's starting to warm up and everything, and we're just going to go through it. Now, it's going to do it, of course, one more time. And even at the 3582, that's actually pretty quick for our read speed of an SSD. Now, yes, it's not the fastest SSD uh, on that read speed, but 
the top two are what you're going to go with with this. Now, that bottom one always drops off on all of these tests that I do. For some reason, I think it's just part of the software. But hey, we're going to go with that. Now, we're going into, of course, the right speed. Now, 6886 out of the 6500 is very, very top-notch speeds for this. I'm going to say this is going to do very well. So if you guys need an SSD like this, of course, the SK Hynix Platinum P41 SSD is going to work out well for you. If you are putting it in, let's say, your PC to your PS5s, you have that option with this. Now look at those writing speeds still staying at 6821. You can't go wrong with that. I want to thank you guys for watching this. Hope you guys have a great one.